Hello, my name is Shawnee Hamilton, and I'll be doing my serial killer presentation on Tommy Lynn's sales on June 28, 1964, in Kingsport, Tennessee. His mother name was Nina Sales, and his father was listed as William Sales. William Sales was an insurance agent, and Nina Sales was a waitress. By age five, he was sent to live with his aunt, Bonnie Wobble, who later wanted to have full custody of Tommy Lynn, but Nina Sales refused to give up her parental rights. So later on, she decided to come back and get Tommy Lynn to, to live with her. Tommy Lynn also had a twin sister by the name of Tammy Lynn, who died at 18 months old from meningitis. He also had two older brothers and three younger siblings that were never specified. Tommy Lynn, at age eight, was introduced to a man by the name of Clark Willis. Clark Willis was later identified as a pedophile. Clark Willis would spend day in and day out with Tommy Lynn, spending money on lavish gifts and play dates. He also had permission from Nina Sales to have sleepovers with Tommy Lynn. Tommy Lynn learned all his sexual activity, began his sexual activity, excuse me, with Clark Willis. When Tommy Lynn would return home, he would begin to act out. By age seven, he was drinking. By age 10, he was smoking weed. And at age 13, he attempted to get into bed with his grandmother completely naked. He was abused also as a child by his mother, Nina Sales. Nina Sales would use coat hangers, belt buckles, sticks, bottles, anything to abuse him for no apparent reason. He was also sent to undergo med mental examination after his attempt to rape his mother, Nina Sales. By age 14, Nina decided that she was going to kick Tommy Lynn out of her home, and he began his life as a drifter. Sales began to live coast to coast and attempt, and attempt most murders as he was crossing country. His first murder occurred when he was 15 years old, which was a seven-year-old boy. Sales was a sexual predator and many of his crimes included sexual mutilation. Most of his victims were adolescent girls and petite women. Sales crisscrossed the country by having freight trains, cars, hitchhiking, and stealing cars. He spent time in the union begging and working as a carny, a barber, and a mechanic or laborer. Sales raped and stabbed a pregnant woman causing her to go into labor while she was being attacked and he later killed the infant. Sales took the opportunity to kill someone as it presented itself. He had no common pattern that police could follow and he had no intentional motive for killing. Sales stated that the total of uh, victims were unknown, but to do the math for yourself, it would include five or six a year for 20 years. By 1987, Sales was a heavy drinker and drug user. He preferred heroin, but he did crank, cocaine, and meth. He attempted to kill an 11 year old girl by the name of Crystal Searle who stopped his killings and was able to identify him for police after he slit her throat, damaging her windpipe, and, pre and she pretended to be dead until Sales left the home. Sales' last victim was her best friend by the name of Kaylin Harris, a 12-year-old girl in Val Verde, Texas. Crystal Slurs gave a location of the murder weapon and description of sales to forensic to the to the police and the forensic test confirmed the presence of sales blood and clothing fibers on Kaylin and vice versa. He stabbed Kaylin sixteen times until she was dead after he sexually abused her. After caught two days after the, the description was given 
he was put in jail until the jury sentenced him to death on September 20th, 2000. Sales applied for an appeal and the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals to overturn his death sentence in 2003, which continued until 2014. They decided that his execution would take place on April 3rd, 2014, and in the Texas law, you do not be granted a last meal. He ate exactly what the other prisoners ate, and he refused any last words. He was di he was killed by lethal injection, and he refused to state specifically how many bodies he actually had. Mm-hmm.